Hello. Hi, Norma. Is that you? Hi, how are you? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh. We have two of you here. Um, okay. Hi, Norma. Uh, please introduce yourself to the others. Hi, my name is Norma Gonzalez, and I'm I'm from Manchester, New Hampshire. An after school program. <laughs> Norma, here today we have. I don't know if you know everybody. We have Maria Beatrice Di from Italy. We have Simon from. Uh, Tanzania, Anders from Sweden, Alan from the United States, Ilan from France, and the presentation today is from uh, Adele, he's going to talk about IoT. So I think now we are ready to, to start. Thank you for your patience and let's go through it, okay? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, can you listen to me? Sorry. I can hear uh, okay? Yes? Can I start? Uh, yes, and now we have Veronica from Mexico. All right. Hi, Veronica. Hello. So we just about to start, Veronica. Then we can make questions at the end and... <laughs> We are we open for a discussion, okay? So let's turn off the, the microphone so we, everybody can listen well, okay? Thank you. Uh, all right, so welcome everybody. Uh, so the title of my presentation is Getting Started with IoT. So it will not be uh, really a very uh, super technical uh, presentation, but we want uh, everybody to start with uh, the Internet of Things uh, concept. Uh, I'm presenting myself. I'm a computer science teacher in uh, middle school in Tunisia. I got a diploma in computer science and with uh, an option industrial computing in 2003. After that, I, I got a bachelor degree in computer applied on management uh, from another university uh, on 2007. And uh, by 2014, I get a master's degree on new educational uh, technologies. So this is uh, our plan. So the first thing we will define what is IoT. We will see some different boards uh, to work with IoT. And we will focus on the board, uh, not the MCU or the ESP8266. We will see some uh, project example. And uh, an important slide, why uh, should we uh, to teach uh, IoT? I will also show you some uh, workshops by, around Tunisia and uh, the work that uh, I made. And but in the end, we will make a programming uh, demo. Is it okay? Uh, just one to Heloisa, if you can, just uh, uh, not mute your, your mic so I can have a kind of feedback from you. Okay. 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 Yes, uh, I, I would like it if you possible, please uh, speak a little bit more slower, so everybody can understand you. Because we have echoes and this stuff. Could you please? Okay. All right. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, what is IoT or Internet of Things? Uh, we have here a definition. It's a network of physical objects. Uh, that can interact with each other to share information and take action. When we say physical uh, objects, uh, we might think about a computer, uh, a phone, uh, but in the near I can't hear. Adele? Uh, uh, 
Anders, can you hear? Adele, we lost, we no, lost him. No. We lost okay. him. So, we, then, we are going to test how many we can have. In no, we, we, we could have a ten of one. We are on, we ha have nine, so. Yes, yeah, so that's. But it's a, it's a screen is shared, so he, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's happened. Yes, the oh, microphone. Yeah. No. <clears throat> Could be an internet issue. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he's back. That's frustrating. So while we are waiting for Adele, I can update you on how Africa Code Week went, actually. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. you should make a presentation about it. Yeah, I think I, think I will next time. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> next, was... week, next week, Alan is going to, to talk to us. Okay. And so the, in two weeks, you could uh, present uh, yeah. something. I resume maybe yeah. oh, it would be great it was, really, it was really nice because we had we had the educational minister of tanzania there we had the minister from ireland the minister of diaspora and education i think and then we had a lot of sap we had like three uh representatives from sap SAP, and then we had from giz who are here and a lot of local educators and teachers were there and it was really really fun we had girls who were live coding with scratch um and it was it was so nice and um what it, so it was we, we had the morning uh, where we were talking about different education initiatives and they were presented she calls for change but also we had university incubators uh, from university of Dar es Salaam who they spoke about how they are teaching robotics, how they are helping startups to create, um, they are helping startups to create solutions using uh, really cool technologies. And also, hey, you say hi. <laughs> I think you met Heloisa. Hello, how are you? Do you remember me? We met you in Bordeaux. Hi. <laughs> You can join us. Be be our guest. You can stay. I'm just passing by the office. I'm going somewhere else. Okay, you are welcome. If you want to sit Thank beside you. him, okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> everybody's leaving. It's evening here, so people are leaving the office and saying bye. <laughs> yes, great. Yeah. But yeah, like so, it was really a lot of. Uh, initiatives that are being done. I saw an initiative with the Raspberry Pi uh, that was being done there. So it was really, really nice. Um, but also, so they spoke about things like teaching Scratch, teaching innovation in local languages. Uh, and they spoke about localizing all these tools, for example, for IoT, with Scratch, 
to make sure the kids and the teachers can explain concepts in the most relatable way. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So, so you could put all this information and in, uh, anything more you have and show us. Yves from Francis told us that he's going to present something about the Europe Code Week. You, uh, the people oh, are having okay. Europe Code Week also. So okay. we could make all this uh, presentations so we can exchange this information so how are things happening in each part of the world it would be nice I think okay, okay. I wonder where Adele is yes Louisa if um, Adele can't come back on uh, if he wants to reschedule for next week, I can delay for a week if that makes things easier. Yeah. Yes. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe he has a serious Simon. problem. Simon. Yes. How many degrees have you now? <laughs> you mean temperature or? Yeah, temperature, temperature. <laughs> Celsius, Celsius. It's about it's about 31, 32 Celsius degrees uh, Celsius. Yeah. 30, 31, 30? Yeah. <laughs> in the evenings, because we are at the ocean, in the evenings it's colder, it's colder. Uh, but during the day, it could be 30, 33, 34, but it feels like 40 degrees. So it, it gets pretty hot, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. But we are used and it's uh it's six it's almost half past six so it's uh it's not hot no <laughs> so it's good now yeah <laughs> yeah it's cold oh and, and under, and under so many degrees huh unders unders yes uh, sweden we we had uh, frost in the morning, uh, about zero degrees, or yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe like that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's getting colder in Sweden. That is, that is, yeah. <laughs> so if you if you send some of your heat on to us, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's possible. It's possible. <laughs> <laughs> You just need to come over here and work with us and spend time with us here. <laughs> yes, maybe. Or, or in Brazil, we are just uh, start the, the spring here, and last week we have 38 in the southern part of Brazil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 40, and then it's just spring, so <laughs> it's the same line on the equatorial line, so. Yeah. Yes. You can come here, be my guest. <laughs> You're <all> welcome. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what do you think to do about Adele? I can't reach him out. Uh, what's your suggestion? I think we can reschedule. But I see Veronica is 18 degrees. Wow. <laughs> Alan, what did you say about uh, what can we do about Adele? Well, if he wants to present n next week, that's fine with me, and I'll just delay. Um, if not, I can I can go next week. But you know, if he'd like to, it looks like he's obviously having some technical problems. Yeah, I think. I think you can have a conversation with him, and if he wants to res to do it next week, then we move the schedule like that. But otherwise, um, he could present the week, the coming week. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm I'm fairly flexible. So um, the only thing is, for me, after November fourth, um, I'd have to do it during the week Saturdays. I tutor. Uh, yeah. 
So uh, I'm free for the next couple of Saturdays. But other than that, we can do it this time uh, on you know, Fridays or, or any other day of the week, pretty much. Or maybe you could talk, uh, Alan, do you think you can talk something for us uh, about IoT, just as an introduction, because, or to use the time, what do you think, people? Just to, to take advantage that all we, of us are here. Uh, what do you think? I can try. Hopefully, uh, I don't have anything prepared. Um, and hopefully I'm not going to confuse people, but I'll try. So the whole okay. object of IoT is to be able Because I, I don't know anything. I couldn't understand a line what Adele <laughs> has said, so I need some more explanation, please. Sorry, I'm doing my best. <laughs> the inter IoT stands for the Internet of Things. And really all it means is being able to connect a bunch of sensors uh, and actuators. Actuators are things like lights and motors to the internet and have these things interact with each other. So an example might be that um, uh, from your cell phone you may want to start up your car if it has the right software in it. So the cell phone would send a message to your car, your car would start and it would be nice and warm if it was a, a cold day. Um, there are a gazillion other things that you can use it for. My purposes are mostly to run things like um, little robot kind of things. And it works by sending messages over the internet. Um, it uses a computing pattern called PubSub or Publisher Subscriber. The way that works is that you have a piece of software that can subscribe to what's known as a topic. So a topic can be uh, my piece of software wants to know every time the mouse moves on the screen, but I don't care about keyboards. So I have a topic that says mouse movement, and when the mouse moves, I have another piece of software that publishes that information, where the position of the mouse, uh, that kind of thing. Now, it, it's you would develop this uh, this, the topics and the messages are all up to the developer. What it allows is um, it, it's a reactive type of system. What that means is that when something changes, you get immediate notification. Um, so it, it, it's, you know, it, it, it would be used in, in a robotics kind of situation or if you need to know, uh, it, and people are using it in things like greenhouses. So that if the temperature rises in the greenhouse, you may want to open some of the windows automatically, those kind of things. Things that you need to do fairly quickly that you want to react to. Um, does that make any sense? Yes. yes. And, and uh, what's, what's the, the difference? difference about, uh, how can I say? What do you have to do to control everything? So, I mean, there, there are several pieces. I mean, so, so you're going to need the hardware. And uh, it looked like Adele was going to be talking about a specialized um, kind of, it's, it's a board that's similar to the Arduinos. Um, I, I, it has, I believe, I, I'm not that familiar with the ESP boards, but I believe they, they allow you to, to easily connect to the internet. Um, I'm using, for most of my stuff now, I'm using a Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> the Pi 3 has internet connectivity, so it makes it fairly easy. So once you have the hardware, now you need some software. And in order for the software to work, you need to use some sort of framework. So the most popular one at this point is called MQTT, which came out of IBM. Um, and what that allows you to do is to go across the internet so that you can have, let's say, again, if you're um, monitoring something like a greenhouse, you may want to get some of the statistics, you know, temperature rise, humidity, the rest of that, and you can get that on your phone, you know, while you're at work. 
and it's designed to go across um, multiple internet nodes. Uh, the things that I'm doing, I don't really need to do that. I, I work in an area where I'm using a essentially a private LAN. Um, it's right now it's going across the router in my house, but it doesn't go any further than that. It it can, but if I'm controlling a robot, just trying to make it move forward and backward and um, see what it's seeing if I have a camera on it. Uh, I don't really, I, I don't need to have that kind of remote across the internet. I'm not doing this from my home or, or from somebody else's house and seeing what my robot is seeing. Uh, it, it's more just controlling things as fast as possible. And that was my, my whole goal was to get things to work very, very quickly. Uh, sorry about my, my ignorance about this, but in the medical uh, uh, they have, uh, for instance, a doctor can control a robot, you said about robot. They can control a robot that is going to make a surgery in another country, for example. Is that an IoT example? Should it or, or not? Because it already exists. Uh, yeah, that, that so I, mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what technology they're using. I don't know if they're using MQTT or, or some other thing. But yeah, that is a, a good example because when the doctor is manipulating his local controls, it has to work quickly at the site where the patient is. So you need to be able to get the messages that do the actual operation from the doctor who is, is performing that operation remotely. So yeah, that, that's a, a very good example. Uh, okay, and another example should be, we know that there are some um, stuff of such as refrigerators or something like that, that uh, you can turn on or control the temperature at home uh, using your phone. Uh, is it another example? Yeah, yeah, the, 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 there's so many things. I mean, there is... Um, I'm not sure if it's sold internationally. There's a thermostat, the thing that controls the heat and cooling of your house. Uh, it's by a company called Nest, and that can be done remotely as well. One of the problems that they're worrying about with IoT, that people are going across the internet, security is not all that great. So somebody can potentially do mischief. So if they know that you have um, a system they can, you know, let's say an alarm system for your house, they can turn off your alarm system and then break into your house. Uh, there are problems now. I, IoT also is being used. Uh, a lot of the new cars um, have these, um, instead of keys, they have these little things you put in your pocket and you press a button. People are opening and starting cars with Raspberry Pis that are not their cars. They're not doing, well, they may be doing it maliciously, but people have shown that that can be done. So there's a big problem with IoT in terms of security, and that is not being addressed right now. So like your example of the doctor, the one thing you don't want to have happen is while he's performing his operation, you don't want to have somebody coming in and taking over the controls and doing damage to the patient. Yes, because sometimes the people who are not in the same country and they don't have time to wait. Yes. I mean, it has great, great potential. Uh, for, I don't know how long this IoT has been, because I have learned about this kind of stuff, the doctors operating robots remotely from another country. Uh, I think it's they are using Netherite, isn't it? Most likely, yeah. I mean, there's been forms of it forever. I mean, um, when they send satellites up into space and they control the satellite, it's not over the internet, but I mean, it's remote control. So it's kind of a, it's not internet of things, but it's, you know, that's where it came from, is being able to control things remotely. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, oh, like that was back. Almost. Oh, hello. Here he is. Oh, we <laughs> happy Look, back. I'm extremely sorry. I don't understand the problem. Uh, super, super sorry. Really. Too much energy from me. <laughs> I'm really, really, it's the first time that it happens to me, so, uh, okay, I will try to be quick, okay, and to make uh, the conversation, okay? I, 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 I'm a bad student, so I asked for another teacher to explain me because I wasn't understanding, so I need the extra classes, so Alan kindly was explaining uh, something about IoT while I'm waiting for you. So welcome. All right, cool. So I can continue uh, with the tool, not coming back to the concept, right? Okay. Okay. So I will try at least to 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 uh, to make this uh, interesting uh, for everybody. I'm uh, super sorry. Let's try. Yes. The concept we right. we, we were discussing the concept. So All right. Okay. Now I think everybody understood. So mm -hmm. we can start from this part on all right all right so this is the concept we already spoke about this about this so uh, now uh, the problem is when if you want to start uh, a board to make a project uh, usually we we you all know i think the arduino uno uh, Luisa, you know it right okay Okay, so this this board, uh, the problem with uh, this board is that uh, this board is not, uh, there is no uh, connectivity with it uh, in origin, which means that if you want to connect it to the internet, uh, you need another shield. So it means that you need to make a new board, uh, to pay uh, another uh, component to make it uh, connected. Okay, so uh, Arduino company, they made a new uh, uh, hardware. Uh, called uh, Arduino uh, Maker 1000, and it costs uh, $30. It's like the Arduino Uno, but with Wi-Fi. I just saw a message that said someone had muted Adele. I'm not yes. hearing them. I don't know if anybody else is. Uh, Anders, please, uh, the control, just for you, the control of the room, okay? <clears throat> yes, but I, I don't see him. <laughs> I don't know where yes, he is. Yes, uh, Veronica has turned him off. Uh, but uh, he, he could uh, turn it on by himself. <clears throat> yes, but he doesn't know. Ah. Uh, okay. Do you listen to me? Yeah. Yes. No, All right. Somebody cut you off. <laughs> ah, it's strange. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, uh, did, did you see this uh, slide? Yes. So uh, I was saying that the regular, uh, if you want to work with uh, with IoT. Uh, usually, people they uh, the or electronics they start with the regular Arduino Uno board, but now Arduino uh, made a new uh, board called uh, Arduino Maker 1000, and it costs thirty dollar. So uh, it's not that uh, cheap. And if you want, uh, also you want to make a project, you 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 can also use the Raspberry Pi. Uh, but uh, but it's co uh, a computer and uh, it's a little bit uh, complicated. So so um, my uh, suggestion is to use uh, this family, the ESP8266. So uh, the ESP8266 is uh, is from the uh, the company called the Espressive. It's a Chinese uh, company. So uh, they they pay, they build a small uh, ship. Uh, this uh, this one, and uh, the super good thing about this ship is uh, like a microcontroller is like an Arduino Uno but with Wi-Fi. And the good thing uh, uh, with this is the price. For example, this board, not MCU, is uh, four dollar. 
Uh, is it okay? Okay. Okay. Just I need to get it's a feedback not, to to to, to 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 be sure. This not the code that you are always talking <laughs> your posts is Chinese. Yes, not MCU. Yes, this is the magical board. Uh, uh, if you are working with, if you are a user of Arduino Uno, and you want to 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 make uh, something uh, with connectivity, unfortunately, the Arduino uh, Uno is is not the right uh, uh, for me. It's not the right tool. So you need to to move uh, to the ESP because of the price and uh, mainly, I think, because of the pri uh, the price. Uh, there is several uh, op 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 possibilities. There is this not the uh, MCU, but also uh, there is uh, this uh, WeMOS. It's uh, the same. Uh, you can do the same almost uh, like uh, not MCU. It's just uh, the. It looks like an Arduino Uno. Uh, the the third uh, board is uh, from Adafruit, and uh, it costs uh, ten dollars. Uh, uh, what can we do with this uh, board, uh, not the MCU or ESP8266? We can make, for example, an embedded web server to monitor a temperature uh, of your room or to monitor our uh, uh, network of motion sensors. Imagine, for example, you have uh, a lot of motion sensors uh, around the, your house and you want to monitor them. So uh, you can plug a monitor uh, this sensor to uh, uh, node MCU and make a network of uh, sensors and it's very easy uh, to do even for a person uh, not uh, working on computer science or electronics. Uh, you can also control your home object with your Android phone. Uh, you can get a notification on social media uh, with Facebook, Twitter when for example a plant, your plant uh, needs uh, water. You can also uh, build a remote controlled robot. So, with just this uh, board, the not the MCU, you can really make all these uh, projects and in uh, in a very low uh, price. Uh, is it clear for now? Yes. Question uh, uh, about this? Any question? Any remark? Is it clear for everybody? Yep. Yes, it is. Okay, so I mean these examples uh, usually they I mean they are technically in the in the past uh, they are hard uh, to to do but now with this ship uh, and the, the improvement of technology it will be very easier easier easy uh, even for a beginner so uh, why should we uh, teaching IoT concept uh, at school. The IoT, when you speak about IoT first, you will learn electronics. Uh, you will also learn programming uh, with the, because we program uh, in blocks. You will also uh, learn some networking uh, concepts like IP address, gateway. You need to know them and uh, how to design a, a small network. You will also learn about web services. And uh, one important thing is to break the barrier between uh, software and uh, hardware. Uh, so this is the tool that uh, I made. It's called uh, Tunyot for ESP8266. It's uh, an online tool. Uh, it's based on Blockly. Uh, so you will pl program it like uh, if you are used with uh, App Inventor. It's uh, almost like App Inventor or Blockly Duino. It's the same uh, 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 interface. Uh, it generates an Arduino uh, code, but this code is oriented where, uh, um, to the ESP8266. Uh, the tool is available in four languages, so English, Arabic, French, and uh, Spanish. And I made uh, a documentation with a list of 35 uh, videos on YouTube. With these videos, you can start uh, from the beginning, uh, how to install uh, the IDE and the, uh, or the environment to how to make a network, for example, of sensors, how to control your light uh, with your Android phone, or to you how to use MQTT. Alan was speaking about MQTT, and we are using it. And it's very easy uh, uh, to, to program. Excuse Is me. Is it clear uh, for this? No, no, excuse me, I have a question. You yes. said that you made this online too, isn't it? Yeah. OK. This Sorry, yes. 
Okay. Yes, Tunyot. It uh, stands for Tunisia IoT. This is the reason. <laughs> okay. And I will show you. I will make a demo later. Yes, yes, yes. Just one question, please. Uh, the four languages. And yes. Then Chinese. Uh, who helped you? How? Uh, this this documentation. I didn't make this documentation. I made only the documentation in English, and some other people around the world. They made uh, the documentation in Hindi, in Chinese, and uh, I, I saw one guy uh, in Italian. Oh, that's it's, wonderful. It's not me. I don't know uh, Chinese or Hindi. <laughs> yes, but someone uh, translated your material for another language. Exactly, yes. So there is an interest about uh, this, uh, about uh, the tool. Great. Please go on. Yes, this is the message that I wanted uh, to, to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank yes. you. Yes. So, uh, because all of this, so we should uh, teach uh, IoT at school, I started uh, uh, teaching this and spreading uh, this technology in uh, Tunisia. So, uh, this is my first workshop in uh, primary school. These are primary school uh, students, uh, sixth of the grade in uh, Tunis. And uh, we made like uh, three workshops. In the beginning, we used uh, um, Arduino, and after that, we moved to uh, not the MCU, and it was very easy for them. So the project was to move. We, we have a servo motor, uh, and this flag is connected to the servo motor, and we have to control uh, the flag over uh, Wi-Fi. The other workshop, uh, this one is for uh, mi middle school and high school. Uh, in Gerba, in my hometown, in the south of Tunisia, and the interesting thing about this workshop: these uh, they are these kids. They are member of an association, and they are uh, familiar with Arduino, and they can program. Uh, they are very comfortable working with it, and they work with Block Arduino. So uh, when I, I I bring them the the tool, uh, they they made a lot of projects and uh, uh, very quickly. Uh, so moving from Arduino to ESP8266 uh, is, uh, is uh, very easy. Uh, this is another workshop. Uh, it's my last uh, workshop. As you can see, it's in the ga uh, art uh, gallery. Uh, and we made uh, some electronics and IoT workshops. All of these uh, young people, they are students from different fields. And they are also active uh, with their association and they will uh, teach uh, more uh, kids and also uh, students uh, these concepts uh, around the world. So uh, I made, uh, for now, I made a workshop in Kenya. I started with this. And also in France during the Scratch conference of uh, Bordeaux. And I, I will present my tool also in the International Tool Fair of, uh, of Bulgaria uh, next month. Uh, do you have a question for about uh, this? Because now I will go to the demo. That's okay. Go on, please. All right. So this is my site. The site is uh, call it uh, easycoding.tn. So you will find uh, everything from the documentation uh, to the tools uh, to the workshops that uh, I made. So you will not uh, be uh, lost. Uh, I have my own version of uh, Block Arduino. I think some of you, they know it. Uh, and this is uh, my version of uh, Tunyot for ESP8266. I will try to show you in this uh, example, uh, like Hello World in IoT, how we will connect our board to uh, the internet or to Wi-Fi network, okay? I will do this example, and later you can ask me if you want to see another thing. So okay. uh, I have a full category here. It's called IoT. It's uh, all these blocks. They work uh, only with the ESP8266. Uh, so the first thing I will do, I will try to connect to the, my Wi-Fi network. Uh, as you can see here, I have the IoT uh, station mode. I have two options, so I'm, I can connect to a network with password and or a, pas a network without password. So for example, let's say I have a network with password. So I just plug this here, okay? So the next step 
is, uh, you know, when you, tr you, you ask to connect to the internet, to, to a Wi-Fi network, your, uh, your device, a computer, or uh, uh, your phone will try to connect. So with this loop, uh, the board will try to connect to the internet, uh, to the Wi-Fi. Is it okay? I'm just showing you what you can uh, do. Unfortunately, we got that problem, so I, I need to do it fast. So with this, two blocks, you are already connected to a Wi-Fi uh, network. Let's say you want to uh, run a web server. So you go to uh, IoT server and you will uh, call this block, start server on port 80. So this uh, block will make your board run as a server. Uh, let's imagine I want to, uh, for example, uh, in our uh, web server, I want to display a web page. So what I need to do, I will add this wait connection block. So it will wait for any connection and I will make a web page. So I have a full category here, web page, where I can uh, design my web page. I will put it here, this page. What this page will do, uh, when I will access to my, my, uh, my board, over Wi-Fi, I will have a, a black, uh, a blank, uh, an empty uh, web page. So I will show a message. For example, I will show hello world. And for example, this block, this block, will show a message on. Uh, I can access to my board uh, with uh, uh, from the from the web with a brow web uh, browser. Um, let's say, for example, I, I, I want to send uh, an information to Twitter when, uh, uh, or uh, to Facebook where uh, an event is happening. So I will, do, I will show you how to do this in a very easy way. I have here in web services, I have a block uh, that connects to a website called IFTTT. So, this block will sound, uh, if I fill uh, this, um, these blocks with uh, specific information, uh, it will send information to Facebook. For example, I can say, oh, uh, there is an attack. Okay? So, this block will send an information on Facebook. There is a step that I need to do, which is connecting to uh, the site IFTTT. Uh, I just need here to make uh, if statement. I will say if, um, for example, uh, another, uh, for example, a digital value, uh, for example, is equal to one, which means that uh, let's imagine I have a motion sensor. And uh, that motion sensor will give me one if there is a motion. This, uh, this block will send uh, a message on a Facebook account if there is a motion around you. So what I wanted to say about this example that the, the programming part is uh, very easy as you can see. You just need to follow the documentation and to start uh, step by step and uh, I think that everybody uh, can program IoT without any uh, background on programming or electronics or uh, web services. So, if you have any question, okay, that's no, wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm super sorry because I was like disturbed by uh, the, the 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 interruption. So, uh, <laughs> I'm super sorry. Okay. Adele, I, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, is the connectivity essentially, um, I'll call it one-to-one. -one. So do you have, um, let's say, an actuator on one side of the connection and a sensor on the other? Or if you have an actuator, uh, or I'm sorry, a sensor, that can it send to multiple actuators? Multiple yes, you can, you can do with Wi-Fi because we are using Wi-Fi, it's not a Bluetooth, we are using Wi-Fi, you can control with the same 
uh, I mean, uh, with the same connection, you can control a lot of sensors. Uh, you can get information from these sensors. Uh, sorry, you can get information from these sensors. You can uh, control, uh, for example, um, LED. You can control uh, relay. You can control anything. A lot of uh, you are not limited by any number. And and the cool thing with uh, he said MQTT. The cool thing about MQTT, you can control, for example, your relay with your lamp or your fan from anywhere uh, in the world. I have a, 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 I have a blocks. Uh, I will show you uh, that connects you to MQTT server of Adafruit um, web services. Yes, this is this is the block. Uh, Alan, are you watching me? Yes, I am. So uh, these blocks, they are super easy. They will subscribe to the Adafruit MQTT server, and they will get an information. And this is the information. Read last value. So you can control anything uh, in your house from uh, the internet with MQTT. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you have a streaming sensor, something like um, um, I'm trying to think of, of one I know in a robot they have things that are line followers essentially it's a light sensor and yeah. it's constantly sending out data um, uh, okay let's say you want to to get data from a, a web server okay this is the your question you want to get an information right yeah, well, we how to get an information? Okay, I will show you the block. Uh, I when I, I showed you the web server uh, mode, so which means that you are uh, acting as a server. Your board is acting as a server. Let's say you want to be a client, and you want to get information from other server. I have only one block. It's called send request with an answer. You will put here the IP address and the message that you want to send. Okay, yep. so uh, let's imagine I have already made a web server that will uh, display uh, a value of a sensor, and I, I made a client uh, that sends uh, requests and asks for uh, this sensor. It's just this block, and you put this into a loop like this, and you, you can uh, uh, put this value. Uh, I mean, you will get the, this value uh, in uh, put it into variable, and you can do whatever you want. Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, I I, I understand. Uh, I I I don't think that if I understand, but uh, for example, we could do uh, a program for example uh, asking for this group who is going to participate in next section and get from them the answer and or not for example, uh, uh, here when you speak you about connect, IoT, uh, yes when you speak about iot uh, usually you speak about hardware so you we need a uh, uh, hardware so uh, we need to have a hardware this is the point okay. if you have a hardware and you want to connect it to the internet and control it it's super easy uh, okay. What I was at, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, what I was asking was, uh, what I was trying to, to say, if you have a streaming sensor with using MQTT, if you have a streaming center, sensor that's continuously sending data at a very rapid pace, do you have mm -hmm. latency issues at all? Meaning that if I need to react to something, um, I'm not getting that information because of the, you know, for a very long period of time. I need, you know, if I'm looking to get something immediate, uh, I'm guessing there's some latency involved. Uh, I, I didn't try this. I mean, uh, uh, so I really can't, uh, for streaming, I, I, I didn't try. So I really can, I can't not answer you technically. Okay, if it is uh, perfectly working, but I know that it's very easy to get information. Streaming and uh, working with, I mean, in um, in very hard situation for the ESP, I, I really, I don't, I, I don't know, so okay. I can't answer. Yeah, I, I don't. MQTT, at least my opinion, mm -hmm. is wasn't 
designed for streaming applications. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's excellent to get things across the internet, but in mm -hmm. playing with, with some of this stuff um, locally, mm -hmm. I, I found that the latency of MQTT is pretty high. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, I, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. other things where you're just trying to turn on a motor, turning it off, that's fine. Yes, exactly, yes. You know, for me, uh, I'm an educator uh, mainly, and we, uh, this tool, I think I see it more for uh, for uh, beginners with IoT, for persons who are not familiar with these concepts and they want to make something practical. So uh, uh, making a workshop like one day or two day or three days workshop with this tool will introduce them in a very quick way to all these uh, concepts. If, of course, if you are an engineer or a student in, uh, in, in engineering or telecommunication, I think they need, uh, uh, they will not use blocks programming. You did a really nice job. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So this is uh, the point. I mean, for, for me, we, we want to, to do practical workshops uh, for everybody so they really make uh, they can make their own Android app, they will control, uh, uh, for example, a lamp, or they will send an information on Facebook or Twitter, or, yeah. Practical workshops uh, makes all the difference. Yes, you're right. Wonderful mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 can you can ask me any question? Because I know that yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people that are just beginner, they might ask themselves, "Oh, can I really control my my, for example, the door of my my house with uh, an Android phone that I made?" I say yes. With this tool, it's possible. I just wanted to show you this playlist. Uh, can you see? Ah, I share my screen. So, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. All right. So this is the playlist that I, I was talking about. You will start from the install of the 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 um, uh, the environment. Uh, for example, in tutorial three, you will work with LED like a regular Arduino Uno. Uh, in the first part, you will use, for example, uh, the ESP as a regular Arduino Uno. So no connectivity. Okay. From the video number ten. Uh, this video, you will start the connectivity part. So you will see, for example, what is a dynamic uh, IP address, what is a static IP address. Uh, for example, you can see how to post uh, something on Facebook. And uh, I don't know if you see, uh, it's just seven minutes here. Uh, so if you just follow this uh, video, in 15 minutes, you will send your first information on Facebook. Uh, uh, this is the IP. Anyway, <laughs> oh, Adele, Adele uh, let me ask yes. you something. Um, for uh, I, I'd like to, I think it's interesting since we have different levels of understanding of this matter. For example, mm -hmm. me that I don't understand anything about this and the super mm -hmm. <laughs> guys, super chicks guys here. So I think it's wonderful. So everybody could understand a little bit of what it, it's possible. Yes. Subject mm -hmm. and know about this wonderful work you have already done. I think it would be uh, great if we have the link for this. Um, Yes, this for, videos, uh, yes, yes, tutorials, yes, I, videos. Yes, and I, will I also, I, I also think that the the thing is not finishing here and today. Uh, I think we have much more questions to discuss. My suggestion is that uh, next session, Alan is going to talk about something, and we should uh, discuss a little bit more about this and for sure we'll have a lot of questions uh, my point of view about uh, this you know iot will be part of our uh, near future it for sure it will be so uh, it's time to start you will you everybody of us will start one day so this one day we don't want to be at, uh, we don't want that it is too late we can start now we, we can, of course, do this step by step, 
We are, and as you can see, the board is very cheap, and uh, and y y we need to follow our, this technology and teach this to, to to kids. It's very important. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we are about finishing our session. I'd like to ask it to the others if they have any question, or otherwise we. I invite everybody to be here for next session that Alan's going to present. Uh, and we can keep on with this discussion because there's a lot of material to process, to understand. So, Beatrice, Anders, Norma, Simon, would you like to say something? Or to ask something. <laughs> Uh, just, uh, I think it's important to learn IoT also for students uh, because is, um, uh, they, are, they have to, to, to understand how we are controlled by someone uh, else. I mean, uh, to learn how to work something, you can learn how someone uh, control you in some way he also as uh, simon told uh, uh, wrote is important also to practice uh, we 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 should practice to understand better no that is that uh, what do you mean uh, what do you mean uh, you mean uh, uh, simon is uh, that uh, idea Uh, Simon, we don't hear you. No, we don't hear you, Simon. No? You can write and we can read. How about now? Can you hear me? It's okay. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Yeah. So like I was saying, I think for educators, yes, it's really good to hear these tools, but I think we could try uh, to practice this on our own and to be able to get a clear understanding because the presentation is really nice and thank you for uh, a good presentation Adele um, but I think it would be really nice if because I'm an educator here also it would be good to try out and see how it works uh, before I can say I'm going to teach it yeah uh, Veronica would you like to tell something to us Yes, uh, when at first I love I love this work because um, we we work we have workshops in Mexico. Uh, we are a team. This is a really nice thing because if I don't know something, somebody knows about, and and this is real uh, uh, so uh, important for us because uh, we have in our uh, group three people who um, who knows all about this kind of works and programming and codes and iot and i think if this is so um, so easy to to learn and to teach for students and for teachers because we we teach teachers too and the students have a lot of ideas and when we put it all together they said oh i want to do that and that and that and that but i don't have the tools but i think this is a good tool and uh, i i please could you give us your um, link of your page uh, because i only write something is easy coding yes, or it's going to send us yes thank you yes. Um, i love it thank you very much Thank you. Anybody Thank else? Thank you. It was a pleasure. Uh, Norma, are you here? I don't think no. they left. Okay, so uh, to, to keep on time, so I'd like to thank you very much, Adele, for your presentation. Thank you. It, it was a pleasure like for me. To thank everybody for being here for this wonderful session, for your contribution. 
And I invite everybody to next week's session when Adele is going to talk with us. Maybe another one, Simon talk about Africa Code Week and another one, Eva's talking about Europe Code Week. So thank you everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>